Oh, I'm Matt Rozu, uh, Dean and Professor of Economics at Susquehanna University Sigmund Y School of Business. In this video, we're going to go through a three-player simultaneous game. Uh, we're going to look at the game, we're going to talk about it, it's a little bit complex. So we are going to go through and solve, uh, give you an example of how you might attack a three-player simultaneous game using the iterated deletion of dominated strategy. So this is an exam question for my undergraduate game theory class here at Susquehanna University. So Gus and Henry are friends at Susquehanna University and they want to hang out together on a Friday night. Quite frankly, right, they're deciding where to go to drink a few apple juices. They also know Scooter. Uh, they don't mind being around Scooter, but they are a bit leery. The scooter is suspected to be a member of the infamous Susquehanna University secret COVID police force. So it's a secret police force, so they don't know that Scooter is a member. But they think Scooter might enjoy busting students for COVID violations if multiple other people try to gather in an unapproved indoor space together. So what, what are the options here? What are the strategy possibilities? Well, Gus and Henry could choose to enjoy apple juices in Henry's room, in an empty classroom in Steel Hall, or in a cornfield. Scooter doesn't know the cornfield's an option. Or I'm sorry, the Scooter doesn't know the classroom is an option. So we'll either visit Henry's room or the cornfield. Internet and all cellular communications are down, so they can't communicate ahead of time where to meet, and here is the payoffs. The default on these always payoffs go Gus, Henry, Scooter, first, second, third, Gus, Henry, Scooter. Find the Nash equilibrium or multiple Nash equilibria of this game, and in this exam I gave very specific instructions, actually. Look for dominant strategies and also, use the iterated deletion of dominated strategies when possible. I say show or explain the work, of course, for an exam. To start off, there are going to be no dominant strategies in here. I could just say that having written through, you can go through and verify and check that out for yourself, but there will be no dominant strategies available. So are there dominated strategies? Well, let's start looking for... Um, Start looking at uh, Gus here. So, right, Gus is the first payout. Negative seven's less than negative one. Okay, so maybe Henry's room is dominated. Six is equal to six. But six is better than negative two, right, if we're comparing these two. Therefore, um, Henry's room is not dominated by the cornfield and vice versa, right, because negative one's better than negative seven. So, Henry's room versus the classroom, negative seven's less than negative one, but six is better than negative one. So Henry's room is not dominated by the classroom either, or vice versa. Cornfield in the classroom, negative one versus negative one. Six is greater than negative one, so perhaps classroom is dominated by cornfield. But if Henry chooses the classroom and Scooter chooses Henry's room, Gus would rather go to the classroom than the cornfield. Therefore, um, neither of these are dominated by the other. Gus initially has no dominated strategies. Okay, what about Henry? So Henry's the second payoff in here. Uh, okay, go into Henry's room. Well, it's negative seven here. Um, if Gus is in Henry's room and Scooter's in Henry's room, whereas the cornfield's negative two. So perhaps Henry's room is dominated. Five is less than six. Um, but five is greater than negative two. And it's also greater than the negative two here. So we know Henry's room is not dominated by either option. Got negative two, uh, the cornfield negative two versus negative two, six versus negative two, and negative two versus negative two. Okay, so there's a chance the classroom's dominated, but we have to go over to this other side, right? Because those were the, these are the options when Scooter's choosing Henry's room. Here's the options when Scooter's choosing the cornfield. So we've got six versus negative two, seven versus negative two, six versus negative two. The classroom is always less than or equal to uh, the cornfield. Therefore, this is a 
dominated strategy. Okay, what about Scooter? Does Scooter have any dominated strategies? Okay, so we've got payoffs of, for Scooter, it's the third payoff, right? And for Scooter, is Henry's Room or Cornfield superior to the other? So we'd have to look at all of these six outcomes and are the third payouts for all of these six outcomes either greater than or less than the payouts for all of the six payouts of these six? So, well, we've got 10 is greater than negative 4. 6 is equal to 6. Okay, so we, we could still have a weekly dominated strategy. Um, Henry's, or, um, Henry's room could, or Cornfield could be weekly dominated by Henry's room. We've got 6 versus 6. We've got zero versus six, okay. We've got six versus negative two. Zero versus six. Well, neither of these strategies is dominated by the other, right? There's a couple cases where for Scooter going to Henry's room is better, right? This payoff of 10 is better than a payoff of negative four. Um, this payout of six is better than a payout of negative two. However, there's a couple cases where it's worse, right? Here, Scooter gets zero, right? If Gus and Henry are both in the cornfield, Scooter gets a payoff of zero in Henry's room, but a payoff of six in the cornfield. So neither of these is dominated by the other. We Now that we've eliminated one strategy for Scooter, however, we can go back and look at Gus and see, are any of these strategies now dominated, right? This is called the iterative deletion of dominated strategies. Uh, so let's, let's just take a look here. Um, if Gus goes to Henry's room, payoffs are negative seven, six, nine, or zero, depending what the other two are choosing. How does that compare? Well, negative seven is, great, is less than negative one, six is equal to six, but nine is greater than six. So Henry's room and Cornfield, neither of these dominates the other. We've got some cases where Cornfield is better, some cases where Henry's room is better. What about Cornfield versus Classroom? We've got negative one, six, six, and seven. Comparing that to negative one, negative one, negative one, and zero. Actually, in all cases, Classroom is less than or equal to uh, the Cornfield. So we could eliminate those. Now, are there any other ways we can iteratively delete the dominated strategies? I'm going to leave you to go ahead and verify this, but there are no other options. Every other option you'd look at, um, right, there are two strategy choices remaining for everybody, Henry's Room or the Cornfield. Those are the strategies available for everybody from this point on. Um, and there are no dominated strategies for any of the players. So from that point, then we can look through uh, we have done the iterated, iterated deletion of dominated strategies. Are there any Nash equilibria of this game in pure strategies? Well, this outcome, clearly not a Nash equilibrium um, because the payoffs of negative seven would prompt Gus and Henry to want to change. What about down here? Negative seven, well, it's better than negative one, but five is less than six. So Henry would want to switch from Henry's room to the cornfield. Up here, six, negative two, and six. Okay, well, Gus has no incentive to change. Henry does not want to change to go from negative two to negative seven. And Scooter does not want to change from six to six, right? A couple of them are ties. But ties are okay. You don't, you know, the a Nash equilibrium occurs when Nobody has an incentive to change their choice. If it's a tie, you don't have an incentive to change your choice. So that is a Nash equilibrium in this game. What about Gus Cornfield, Henry Cornfield, Scooter, Henry's room? We've got six, okay, Gus doesn't want to change. We've got six versus five, Henry doesn't want to change. We've got zero versus six, uh, Scooter would want to, want, to, want to switch the choice, so that's not a Nash equilibrium. Let's go over to the uh, quadrant where Scooter's choosing Cornfield. We've got 9, 9, and negative 4. Well, Scooter doesn't like that, and Scooter could change to go to Henry, uh, Henry's room 
and get 10 instead of negative 4. So this is not a Nash equilibrium. We've got 0, 6, and 6. Now Gus would change from getting a payoff of 0 to getting a payoff of 7. So that's not a Nash equilibrium. What about this payoff of 7, 7, and 6? Seven? 7's better than 0. 7's better than 0. 6 is better than 0. We have found a second Nash equilibrium. Over here, 6, 0, 6. Well, Gus at the cornfield at 6 could switch to go to Henry's room and get 9. It's not a Nash equilibrium. And what have we found? We've found two Nash equilibria of the game. Now, I specifically mentioned you should find the you should use the iterated deletion of dominated strategies when possible. If you want something a little bit interesting, go back and don't use the iterated deletion of dominated strategies. See if you can find some other Nash equilibria that are hiding within weakly dominated strategies. We, uh, if, you, if you go back, you might you might end up finding that. But this is this is a uh, question one. Uh, this would be for the full credit, noting, okay, there are two Nash equilibria in the game. Gus going to Henry's room, Henry going to the cornfield, Scooter going to Henry's room. Or Gus, Henry, and Scooter all going to the cornfield. Those are the two Nash equilibria of this game. The second one says, without simply providing a list of numerical payoffs, can you briefly summarize the preferences for each player in the game? So I put a note in here, right? I'm not asking what the equilibrium is or the equilibria. You found that already. But can you use the payouts to find what's motivating each player here? OK. For that, I'm going to go ahead and uncolor and unstrike through everything. So we can just kind of see the game normally again. OK. so. Going up, we can, we can get a lot of insight right looking right away at this very first payoff in the top left corner. Henry and Gus get a payoff of negative 7 and Scooter gets a payout of 10. What does that tell us? Well, it likely tells us that Scooter indeed is a member of Susquehanna University's secret COVID police force. Right? Why in the world would Henry and Gus get a payoff of negative 7 and Scooter get a payoff of 10? Uh, it's pretty clear Scooter gets utility from busting people, and Gus and Henry got busted. Uh, it's an indoor space. There were two people hanging out unauthorized in an indoor space. Scooter coming in, if they were allowing Scooter in, that's the third. Okay, um, but so we see the problem there. Uh, starting with Scooter is off, is, might be the easiest, right? The payoff of 10 here is the highest payoff in the game. So Scooter's single highest utility is busting Gus and Henry. If he's not busting Gus and Henry, though, he actually doesn't mind hanging out with, with them, right? Where Scooter and... Henry are in Henry's room. Scooter's getting a payout of six when it's just the two of them. When Scooter and Gus are hanging out in Henry's room, it's a payout of six. And notice here, Scooter doesn't really want to be on his own. It's a payoff of zero. So Scooter's kind of a bad person, basically. Likes hanging out with these two, but would rather bust them. So that I think that's a pretty brief summary of Scooter's preferences. Uh, Henry, oops, let me unblock the classroom. The dominated strategy actually tells us some interesting insights on Henry. Henry hates the classroom. I don't know if there's PTSD from a bad test or whatever it is, but Henry has no desire whatsoever to go into a classroom. You know, it's always the lowest payouts. Outside of that, uh, Henry likes being able to hang out with friends. You know, you see the highest payouts when they're hanging out with friends, and as long as he's not busted, he does enjoy being at a spot where he hangs out with other friends. He doesn't like uh, going to the cornfield and being the only one in the cornfield. Uh, I mean, who would? So, uh, but he doesn't mind going to the cornfield as long as others are there. See, six, seven, six. Um, he's enjoying time with the friends in the cornfield as long as they're there, but. I mean, who wants to make a trek to the cornfield and be the only one there? That does sound kind of miserable. So um, Henry, I think you could say, hates the classroom, likes being with at least one other person, as long as he's not getting busted. Uh, Gus does not quite have the same overall hatred of the classroom that, uh, that we see from Henry. But outside of that, Gus's preferences are somewhat similar. Um, likes hanging out with other people but really uh, as long as he's not busted. 
right? Like if in the classroom alone with Henry, if Henry were to go in the classroom, Gus is fine. Gus does not mind being in the classroom. Um, the does not mind going into the cornfield um, if others are in the cornfield. Um, does not want to go to the cornfield by himself, right? So Gus's preferences are somewhat the same. Love to be with others. Doesn't want to get busted. Uh, that and that's simple strategy. We could probably go into more, but just in terms of trying to gleam a little bit of information on what's motivating players, that should give you a good sense. So I hope you enjoyed going through this uh, this question. Um, once again, my name is Matt Rosu, I'm Dean of the Sigmund Y School of Business and a professor of economics at Susquehanna University. Thank you for watching.